When I created the Elemental Journals, I wanted to make tarot more accessible as a tool for your self-growth. I also wanted to make the elements that make up everything around us more embedded into the everyday. So in today's video, I'm going to look at how to do tarot with the wand set, which is the fire set. So within this element, within this journal, you're going to find two key elements, the fire, which is the wand, which is the spiritual side, and earth, which is the grounding element. And when you're changing your lifestyle, when you're changing your habits, the best way to make long-lasting changes is to figure out your why, to start with your identity, which is the basis of Atomic Habits as well. When you start with who you are and what you want to bring into this world, when you find your why, what you're passionate about, changing your lifestyle, changing your habits becomes a lot easier. And so the energy of the wands is the energy of Archangel Uriel, who has assisted me in grounding all of this information and bringing it to you. Archangel Uriel has the red flame. So this red, um, if you were to visualize it, it will be a red flame around you. And this is a tool that you can use, the power of visualization, to reconnect with the energy of Archangel Uriel, who brings knowledge from source, ancient knowledge, knowledge that is wisdom in itself. And what you're going to realize when you start working with tarot, working with astrology and numerology is that everything is connected. And you have the 12 houses, which are connected to the 12 signs and vice versa, the 12 signs that are connected to the 12 houses. And each of them symbolizes something. And you can be quite literal. And when you see the number, when you see the house, you can connect it to one of the signs. Or you can look at, into the meaning of what each house represents and connect it to the energies. And now the four elements, earth, air, water, and fire, they also connect to a specific uh, manifestation of the element within us, the humans. So earth signs, they're going to be more uh, about the integrity, more about the identity, more about the safety. And air signs are going to be more about the information, the knowledge, and the intelligence. Then we have the water signs that are all about emotions, empathy, and connections. And finally, we have the fire signs that are here to remind us of the purpose, the passion, the confidence within us. And it's all about balancing because we are each made up of these elements in different proportions. And when we find our element, which is traditionally the sun sign, we can fully step into it and embrace it. But it's important to realize that we are all of the elements. And when we look into the houses, we are all, all of the houses. We have bits and pieces that make up our identity. Depending on, you know, what comes into our natal birth chart, we can understand why we're more attracted to a life path that requires us to change often, whereas some of our friends don't want to change because they're not here to change. They're here to create stable foundations within their community. While you might be more attracted towards change. And so it's important for you to spend more time figuring out who you are in order for you to make the most of your lifetime, in order for you to channel more of your potential using these elements. And tower cards can help us do that. So the first journal, Healthy Habits, borrows the energy of fire, the element of fire, and blends it with the earthly presence so that you can ground more of that passion and Infuse your daily lifestyle with it. So Ace of Wands is the first card. These are the cards that you're going to see within the journal as well. And these are cards that, you know, every tarot deck has. So this is one way to approach the tarot cards, starting with the Wands set. Ace of Wands, where your attention goes is where you spend your time. Choose wisely what you think and do. Ace of Wands is almost like a new beginning when it comes to your mental, spiritual, emotional set uh, mindset. It's like a reset because it's, a, it's the first card of the Wands set. It's almost this jump into a new timeline when it comes to the way that you think, the way that you view yourself in the world and the way that you view the world because you have changed something in your identity, a mindset shift. So it's all to do with 
your self-image, so to do with the leadership, the self-expression, the integrity, the ego. The Ace of Wands almost always symbolizes that you have ascended beyond the limitations of the previous version that your ego was kind of creating for you. And it's synonymous of a new beginning, but it's not a new beginning in the sense of you changing jobs and you changing um, partners and your environment. It's more to do with that internal shift that realigns you more with your authentic self, with a version of yourself that can be a little bit more expansive. We have two of wands next. Envision what you'd like to bring to life today. Set the right intentions and you will. So this is connected to the second house. Resources, values, materials, security, self-worth, union, balance. The two of wands is a continuation of that mindset shift, mindset expansion. You're now using that identity shift to visualize a bolder, brighter, better vision, better version of the future that you'd like to contribute to co-creating. Then we have the Three of Wands. Growth is the process of reparenting your inner voice so that you can fully express your authenticity. So we're taking one step further in the journey. This is connected to the third house of mindset, thinking, communication, conscious mind, speaking and writing. So if the Two of Wands is you considering these new possibilities that have opened up because you've created that mindset expansion within the ace of wands or with the ace of wands with the two of wands is the envisioning part and then with the three of wands is you actually changing things in your lifestyle changing things around you speaking into existence certain things perhaps setting boundaries perhaps trying new things um, experimenting with your choices as to maybe i should start going to the gym maybe i should start doing yoga maybe i should start journaling maybe i should start a gratitude checklist daily these are the energies, this is the, the energy of the wands being moved towards action. And the four of wands then is about the progress. Honoring your progress means you're wise enough to know slowing down is an investment. It's also a time, but you know, once you've had the two of wands where you're envisioning it, the three of wands when you've had some action being made towards the vision, Four of Wands is the, the first checkpoint. It's the first milestone that you reach. And you get a moment to slow down and look around you and understand, I've actually done something different. I've actually changed something. I've actually grown. I've actually expanded. I've actually brought changes to my lifestyle. I've actually contributed to making my life better by believing in myself. Honoring your progress means you're wise enough to know slowing down as an investment is also an invitation for you to work on that uh, work-life balance so that it can be sustainable. This is the fourth house which has to do with home, family, root psychology, emotional security, and subconscious mind. This is a checkpoint where you get to celebrate the little wins, but you're also reminded to think back to where you were a day ago, five days ago, five months ago. Take a moment to celebrate the progress that you've made as you continue to believe in that vision, because there's, you know, there's so many more steps that you will be taking. The five of wands is the point of being tested, your faith being tested a little bit. Every new habit requires us to stretch, but we're infinite and limitless. The five of wands is almost that card where you have to multiply yourself to make sure that all the pieces that you're trying to bring together to, in order to succeed with that vision, don't collapse then you don't collapse in the process of multitasking so this is an invitation for you to add a little bit more spontaneity to add a little bit more play a little bit more joy because yes every transformation is messy in the middle but as long as you believe in the vision you know that you're going to make it to the glorious end you just have to keep showing up daily and sometimes progress is delayed as in the visual progress is delayed so the five of wands is connected to the fifth house of play, entertainment, creativity, pleasure, romance, and children. Bring a, a children's point of view to your journey. This is an invitation for you to ground more of that passion that a child would have because a child is not in a rush to get the money, to get the deals, get the contracts. A child is interested in creating something. It's the passion in the child's ice and the energy and that is what is asked of you to reconnect back with that 
child's play attitude. The Six of Wands is the card of victory. Victory belongs to those who can envision it and feel it in their heart, then act in alignment with it. So now you've made half of the journey towards accomplishing that vision and the vision keeps expanding because you keep expanding because you believe that you can do more, that you are worthy of more, that you can create more and naturally you are creating more. This is the card connected to the sixth house, uh, which is the house of self-growth, self-improvement, work-life, balance, nutrition, habits, routines and service. So this is the card where you are being brought to a new level of self-mastery. You haven't quite figured out everything, but you're not quite where you started with the first of wands, with the, with the ace of wands, with the first card of the wand set. You're somewhere in the middle of the journey. You're gaining that traction. You're gaining that recognition. You're gaining that success. And you are being recognized for the changes that you're making because you're consistent. At this point, there is no going back because you are aligning with the version of life that you want to be experiencing every day. And the vision that you have in your mind is of an even greater future that's ahead of you. Then we have the Seven of Wands, which is a card of multitasking, but in a different way. Now it's no longer just about you. It's about how you communicate with other people, how you partner, how you share that vision. Your higher self already knows what's best for you. Listen to your body and you will understand. The more success you gain into the world, the more you're going to have people approaching you, people asking for advice, people wanting to collaborate, people wanting to infuse their energy with your energy. But you've taken the time to figure out your element. You've taken the time to balance yourself. You've taken the time to expand your belief system, to remove what no longer serves you. So now is the perfect time to try and figure out where do I end? How much of me do I want to share with the world? Which are the parts that fit within this you know, part of the journey? Which are the parts that I want to share with those around me, the community around me? Because the seventh house is the house of relationships, partnerships, one-to-one -one affairs, and commitments. So don't stretch yourself too much outside of you, especially if you have to keep holding that vision and preserving it so that you can ground it. And that vision might be of you wanting to become a fitness influencer, which would mean you have to say no to these invitations that would take you to unhealthier habits, to bring it back to the habits. Think about the vision and what you want to achieve with that vision. And any invitation that does not align with it is a no. And that's okay, because the more you say no to the wrong things, you create space to say yes for the right things. The eight of wands, the speed with which you adapt, and change is the speed with which you will manifest your dream life. So eight is the number of transformation, growth, change, debt, renewal, big feelings, and sex. So it's an unexamined card in, in the sense that this is the card that signifies the house that signifies some of the things that we don't talk about on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a very transformational uh, indicator. It's a, it's a card that talks about expecting the unexpected, you know, keep showing up daily to do your part, to play your part. You have shown consistency. You have demonstrated your commitment. But the Eight of Wands speaks of opportunities coming out of nowhere because of your commitment. But when these opportunities come, they're going to change your life. So you have to keep changing with the changes. That's what happens. You know, with the Six of Wands, you know the plan. You're following the plan. You're changing with the plan. With the Eight of Wands, the plan is going to expand. The plan is going to shift because they're outside contributing factors to that expansion, to that transformation. So allow the changes to change you. Allow yourself to transform as these new opportunities and blessings come into the picture. Nine of Wands. Boundaries helps us protect our inner peace and accomplish our wildest dreams. Nine is the house that symbolizes the search for meaning, the higher education, life philosophy, journeys, and travel. So if this, if the eight of wands signifies that something new is approaching as an energy into your life, as an opportunity, as a person, as an invitation, then the nine of wands is you perhaps having taken that step forward and having said yes to something. But now there's even more things trying to enter your space, energetic space. And you need to be very clear on the instructions as to who you allow, what you allow, 
because that vision is still within you. That vision is still yours to carry. It's not a vision that is shared perhaps just yet. And even if it was, when you have a vision, you don't share that vision with just anybody. That is a vision that is being revealed to you because it's your mission. You're here to achieve something. And so when you have to set boundaries, it might feel strange because the more you step into alignment with your most authentic self, the more you want to give from that authentic place. But there is a reason certain people become out of alignment with us because it's time for us to be introduced to new people, to new opportunities, to new places. And so do not feel guilty for saying no to people that don't align with the version of yourself that you're trying to birth into the world. Ten of Wands is kind of the end of a cycle. Leaving things behind simply means you're ready to welcome ex exciting change into your life. But every ending holds that sadness, perhaps. It's bittersweet because you have invested part of your energy, part of yourself in relationships with people, in employment, in um, causes that you care about, in communities, in events. You leave pieces of you, energetic links to situations and places as you go through life. But when you want to shift your life, when you want to change your lifestyle, when you want to ground new habits into your everyday experience of life, inevitably, you're going to have to leave things behind. And this is a bittersweet moment. It's okay for you to acknowledge that you've been holding on to these burdens as the card shows for a very long time. It's okay to acknowledge that you've been strong. It's okay to acknowledge that they've taught you many lessons, but it's also okay to let them go. Because imagine that, I'm just going to show you the next card. Imagine the, the, the freedom that comes after you've reached that level up, after you've shifted your life. So the Ten of Wands is really a card of congratulations. You've been strong. You've been consistent. You've been committed for such a long time. Well done. And this is the house of achievement, recognition, public life, career, goals, and purpose. This is a huge milestone that you've reached. It's not a small milestone. This is a huge milestone. And if you are somebody that's committed to self-growth as an actively self-growth um actively taking daily steps to that self-growth journey, you will be reaching these milestones more frequently than other people. And you would need to learn to congratulate yourself because the people that you're leaving behind will not be able to clap for you initially because you are leaving them behind. So you have to learn how to um, give yourself that pat on the back when you're trying to change your life for the better. And then the page of wands is linked to the 11th house, which is community, collective ideas, humanitarianism, global awareness, clubs, and friends. So this is almost you breaking free from that old life, from that old cycle, old, old lifestyle, so that you can be introduced to people who are on the same page as you. So the page of wands is, when we love what we do, we start to go through life in a constant state of flow. We allow people to enter our lives when they're here to teach us a lesson. We allow ourselves to open up to strangers when we have to pair up to do a project together. But then we allow ourselves to keep walking forward because we're here to achieve things, because we're here to explore, we're here to study, we're here to research. And so this idea of staying in the same place for too long and building a career and investing 50 years of our life in one place is just no longer something that attracts many people and it's okay to keep changing especially when you found what you love especially when you found that you are changing your life your habits are helping you to channel more of your potential to do what you love and share that with people that you love the night of wands is about tapping into your passion so tapping into your passion is bound to speed up your manifesting powers we have the page of wands finding the joy Find the joy of what it is that you like doing. And then we have the Knight of Wands, and it's that passion, that drive. I am going to get it done <laughs> because I love spending the time anyway. So might as well bring it, bring some strategy, create some strategy around what I love doing and create something that I can sell, something that I can offer to communities. So the 12th house is the house of spirituality, global mission, self-mastery, uh, mystery, and alter ego. And if we have... The community card in the 11th house, we have this global mission. So you might be preparing to be in charge of leading something brand new, of leading a cause, leading a community. 
This is you having taken all these steps to build yourself up where you can deliver the messages, where you can deliver the idea that you've been building as you were building yourself up. Then we have the Queen of Wands, which is kind of embodying the divine feminine energy um, aspect. We all have a masculine and a feminine energy. The feminine is the more intuitive side. It's the more the more kind of in, um, emotionally enhanced side. And it's the, the energy that's, that allows us to be better listeners, for example. It's the more passive energy because it attracts things. So as a leader who is leading with the feminine, you're going to be empowering other people to share their ideas. And you're going to be bringing your attention to them so that you can hear them, so that you can invite their ideas. The Queen of Wands says the best version of your life already exists. You have to become the person who can sustain it. Self-care is key. So we're tapping into two energies here. It's the fire, but also the, um, the water. So the emotional side. This is an invitation for you to have more compassion for yourself and to lead from that place where you have more compassion for the people around you. And we have the King of Wands as the final card of the Wands set. Your commitment to achieving your goals might be your most impressive superpower. Say no to distractions, or rather keep saying no to distractions. This is the divine masculine energy. This is the ruthless force that transforms societies, whatever this force goes, because this is a force that is driven by the purpose. Remember, this is the fire energy. And the divine, while well, the divine feminine energy has the fire and the water, so it's a little bit more mellow. Water it's has a bigger reach than the air in some ways, but the way that the air um, strikes, it's just very straightforward. This is somebody who has mastered their mental um, abilities, and with the passion, they deliver the messages straight to the heart. And this is the type of energy where you fully take charge of what's going on and you fully empower and bring people beside you with you as you share that vision you're ready to share that vision and so the divine masculine energy when it comes to the fire it's fire with air so you're able to shift people's perspective remember the air is about bending a little bit like in the matrix you don't bend the spoon you bend your thinking and when you bend your perspective and you're able to engage in these conversations we're able to bend other people's perspectives not to manipulate them but to show them a different way of existing you step into the king of wands divine masculine energy and so these are the uh, wands cards you can try the 30-day journal uh, for healthy habits it has a big talk <laughs> question every single day so you have a big a uh, question to think about to help you on your self growth journey. And it has the energies, it has the guidance of the 12 houses and the 14 cards of the wants set. And you're going to be working with Archangel Uriel. You're going to be working with the energies of fire, entered primarily, but naturally. All elements are always present. And if you have fire, in your natal birth chart, more so than any other, you might find that this is a, a great journal to start with to ground more of your passion, more of your purpose to achieve your goals.